Hi everyone, welcome back to the class of uh, uh, reservoir production engineering. Today's topic is about the acidizing techniques. As you know, in the previous lecture, we discussed that there are various uh, ways that formation can be damaged, and uh, this formation damage has to be controlled or reduced. So we have two techniques to control the formation damage or to reduce the formation damage. The number one technique as you see here is acidizing or we have the hydraulic fracturing. These are the two ways we can reduce the, the formation damage inside the formation or near the well bore. So today we are going to discuss the acidizing technique and see how they, they work. Well, first of all, uh, let's look at the acidizing technique, how it looks in a video, then we go for this lecture. So what we are doing actually, we are injecting the coil tubing down. Using the coil tubing, we inject the acid inside the formation. Inside of, and here we are injecting the acid also. Here also we are injecting the acid. So once we inject this acid, it will create a fracture inside. This will make a fracture inside. So the oil starts flowing inside this one. See now the oil starts flowing. So, so the job of sending acids inside the formation is called the acidizing job. Clays, feldspar, calcite, quartz, limestone, dolomite, and various other reservoir solid impurities deposits between the sediment grains of the reservoir rocks in the near wellbore region and reduces rock natural permeability and consequently production. Matrix acidizing restores permeability by dissolving rock minerals in the near wellborn region, thus improving productivity in both sandstone and carbonate wells. When natural rock permeability is low, then fracture stimulation is preferred by acid injection. During acid stimulation, acid is injected in the wellbore through coil tubing or bullheading at pressure below fracture pressure. Individual zone or perforation is targeted for acid injection by using packer and bridge plugs. During acidizing, long perforation of horizontal well, acid tends to flow perferentially in the high permeability region, leaving low permeability regions untreated. Industry experience shows that about 35% of acid treatment jobs do not meet expectation because of job design based downhole complexities. So what actually we are doing, we have coil tubing, okay. We send this acid down and send inside the formation. So if there are any minerals which are blocking these phase zone or reducing their permeability, the acid actually dissolves it. Dissolves and the oil starts flowing again. So that's the main job of the acid that we are performing here. Okay. So if you must select the proper acid, otherwise it will be incompatible and create further formation damage. So we have to make sure that whatever selects the acid we are using has to be properly selected. First of all, you have to create the stoichiometry. Okay, so it's what is stoichiometry? Okay, what is stoichiometry? Is the, the chemistry term refers to the proportion of various reactants that participate in the reaction. So stoichiometry is how much, for example, we are using HCl. So how much HCl you are using, how much hydrofluoric acid you are using, how much acetic acid you are using, or any other uh, acid or mineral or you are using I mean ex what is exactly the ratio so stoichiometry actually refer to the ratio or proportions of each of these reactants that participate in the in, in the, that reaction okay and uh, it is known that quantity of formation material result can be calculated so we have to calculate this one exactly you know do the, all the ratio and calculate how much it will dissolve the, the formation and so on so now the first of all we know that what we do we have an acid so we make the well okay and in the formation we have a formation like this one this one and then we have the perforation 
then we will inject the coil tubing coil tubing and inside the inject coil tubing now the acid will come and through these perforations it will go we will send the acid there and we will send the acid there which acid HCl HF what HCl HF will do it will dissolve the minerals here it will make it melt down so that you can go ahead with your production so which acid we use first of all first of all most famous HCl hydrochloric chloric acid regular HCl 15% by weight most widely used okay this is the first one then the second one is which is used is the HF okay HF sometimes the combination is used HCl and HCl HF and sandstone acidizing so this depends exactly which one and how much you are using HCl like how many percent HCl how much HF this is the stoichiometry and so we, we need to be careful for what kind of the HCl and HF they are used together so moderate cost soluble reaction products and uh, they are corrosive we have to put the anti-corrosive agents and uh, you have to make sure that then you as I said you have to use HCl and HF both together and in sandstone they use this one we will discuss it how much exactly so HF is also commercially available both can be used and uh, good for similar corrosion inhibitors are required because they are highly corrosive they can damage all the production system okay so you, as you can see that react with ammonium bifluoride with a solution of 15% HCl which ends up 12% HCl and 3% HF or 6% HF or 9% 9% HCl total of 15% of acid can be used in this one okay then we have the these are the acid then we have the organic acids in the organic acid we have the acetic acid mainly okay available as a 10% solution so acetic acid can be used for acidizing the react incompletely in the presence of the reaction and so on higher cost and uh, dissolving powers then we have the formic acid have low cover volume of dissolved solid lowest volume molecular weight easy to transport okay stronger than acetic but weaker than HCl still it's not like HCl but still because they are the organic one they will do less damage and uh, corrosion is an issue and it's very hard to control corrosion when we are using the formic acid then we have the powder acid we use the sulfonic chloroacetic acid okay these are the one crystalline powder ready soluble in water at well site which is expensive than HCl so it's not really viable to use it then sometimes we use the combination of acetic HCl formic HCl these are used in carbonate and you have to check these combination in the laboratory first you what you will do you will take the rock sample take it to the laboratory and see how these uh, acids organic or the uh, acids are behaving so once you know that they are good enough to use so then you use them so first you take them to the lab and see exactly how many what percent of each is needed and which one you are using and how are their properties and then you use them so for carbonate acidizing you use the acetic HCl and formic HCl okay used in carbonate acidizing designed to exploit dissolving power of economy behave in a high temperature this one and then we have another combination of formic and HF again this depends on how much formic how much HF you have to test in the laboratory like which one is working well so you try them three four different samples check the best out of it and then use them accordingly Yeah, so we have two kinds of uh, acid stimulation number one is the matrix treatment here and it is just near the well bore for example if you have the well bore the well so this works so this was near the well bore not like here or you know very far from the world. so for the near well bore metric acid acid treatment is used 
and uh, okay so it's not really give you lots of stimulation and uh, it the p injection pressure injection should be lower than the fracture pressure so we don't want to fracture the formation we just want to send the acid and do the treatment here so what we do we we have uh, if p injection is known rate depends on the ph product pressure and the fracture gradient so if you want to do send it to the 100 milli darcy per feet so you need 0 0.25 barrels per minute and for 1000 you need 10 barrels per minute okay and the problem with the matrix is that it can go to the wormholes okay for example if i show you that if for example this is our well okay and uh, we wanted to send this acid to this point but what happened because of the gravity or there is a lot of permeability the the acid actually goes there lost there and we do not want to send it here we wanted to send it here but because of the gravity and warm holes means high permeable channels warm holes are the high permeability channels where your acid can be lost so the acid actually was supposed to go there but it went there it's because of the gravity and the wormhole so we this is called the wormhole and it can create problem for the acidizing job okay then the other type of acidizing is acid fracturing treatment and this one what we do we p injection is too high to initiate fracture so what we do we fracture the formation with acids okay this is in order to create more channels and uh, rate of reaction of these acid depend on the rock surface you know what kind of mineral it has and what kind of acid transfer and fluid loss to the formation pore space mainly it depends on the rock surface what kind of mineral it has then the acid reaction or temperature sometimes play also a role for the for the acidizing so anyway in conclusion hcl most widely used in 15 to percent and 28 percent weight due to low cost and highly dissolved power okay if emulsification happens or gelling happens of acl it will slow out the reaction of it and uh, as i said the acid flows in the channel where which is easy to flow for example if you leave the water on the floor drinking water it will go to the place where which is easy and uh, it where it can find its place like you want to send it straight but there is a slope so it will go in a slope direction wherever it is so the pore and fractures and work this causes these acids to move there so it's very hard to send the acid where it is needed to send so that's why you need a very high pressure for that okay the problem is the neither the theoretical nor the experimental studies can predict the number and size and length of the worm hole so still you have to guess and make sure that the acid goes where it, it is needed It is very hard to predict the these wormholes, the length of these wormholes, and uh, they are created in the matrix and controlled by the rate of fluid loss from the wormhole to the formation matrix. Could be few inches, could be few feet, and we don't know exactly how much it is. So what we do, we have to properly, uh, uh, we have to plan it properly. So I will show you. So selection of matrix, matrix acidizing candidate. The most important step is the planning. So you have to plan it very well. Okay. First of all, the well must be damaged. Do your uh, well test or production logging and check exactly with using the PLT. You can find out exactly where you want to send the acid, and which then you have to take the rock sample, take it to the laboratory, check what the what is the which acid is working well, how much is the ratio of acid, HCl, HF, formic acid, acetic acid, what exactly you want to use. Check if it has any corrosion issue or if it has hydrates or other issue so whatever it is just check in the lab and then bring it to the well and do some calculations that i will show you in the next step like how much should be the injection pressure how much the volume you are going to inject these things the so best means to detect damage is through diagnostic well testing so or okay so you have to then compare the pi with the next one so that was the introduction in the introduction we said that we have few different kind of acids that we are using for acid treatment. So now I will show you some videos before we move ahead for acidizing removes more extensive near well bore damage. Acid is injected into the formation at pressures below the pressure at which the formation would fracture. 
Acid injection rates vary depending on reservoir permeability and the extent of the damage. Once the damage is removed, injection rates can range from 0.25 to 1.5 barrels per minute in reservoirs with permeability less than 500 millidarcies to 1.5 to 3 barrels per minute in highly permeable reservoirs. Treating below the fracture pressure is especially important. If the formation is fractured during the treatment, acid will be diverted into the fracture and bypass the damage. Once the well is in production, the fracture could quickly become blocked with the damage and the acid treatment will have been a failure. Additionally, fracturing during a matrix acid treatment can establish harmful communication with adjoining water or gas zones. Matrix acidizing has virtually no benefit for an undamaged well. Flow channels or the effective well bore may be enlarged by the treatment but only slightly since acid penetration into the formation is very shallow usually only a few inches in sandstones and up to 12 inches in carbonates. Since an increase in production from treating undamaged wells is solely related to any increase in well bore radius, the negligible effect can easily be shown. To make the point, let's take the extreme case where a matrix acid treatment dissolved the formation to a distance of six inches from the well bore. One way to estimate the post-treatment production increase uses Darcy's radial flow equation. Comparison of natural and acidized production rates is reduced to a simple ratio where the natural log of the drainage radius divided by the wellbore radius is divided by the natural log of the drainage radius divided by the acid altered wellbore radius. As shown in this example, only a slight productivity increase of 1.11 times the natural productivity could be realized. On the other hand, significant production increases can be realized from a matrix acid treatment when skin damage is present. The same method applies, only the skin factor term is added. For example, if a well had a calculated skin factor of 10, we could anticipate a production increase of 2.4 times the pre-acidizing rate. So that was about the acidizing. And uh, so it shows the good effect on the, the damaged well, not on the undamaged well. That's the main idea.